Hello, and thank you for tuning in to watch this short module on how the public charge test works. My name is Sarah Lacani, and I'm an attorney with the Immigrant Legal Resource Center in San Francisco. I hope that when you have time, you'll also watch the other modules associated with this presentation to learn more about public charge. Module one covers what public charge is and who it applies to. And module three discusses the current COVID-19 public health crisis and its relation to public charge. One note regarding these modules is that they were created specifically for the immigrant community in California. Some information may be applicable to immigrants who reside elsewhere in the US, but keep in mind that I will refer to public benefits programs in California. As I explain in module one, many immigrants are not subject to public charge, so they won't have a public charge test in their future. But what if you will face a public charge evaluation because you're applying for a green card through a family member or for a visa to enter the country? This is a snapshot of the public charge test. As we discussed in module one, Immigration officials use the public charge test to see if an immigrant is likely to use certain government services in the future. The officers look at all of an immigrant's circumstances to try to predict this, not just prior use of public programs. As you can see on the slide, officers consider all sorts of factors in a person's case. And things like having a good income, having a job, being healthy, or having a high school diploma will help you in the public charge test. The Trump administration implemented two new public charge policies in February of this year. One of the changes was adding consideration of additional public benefits programs for public charge purposes. This means that officers are now considering all of the programs listed here when they're trying to predict whether the intending immigrant in front of them is likely to use government services in the future. The programs in red are the newly added programs. The programs in blue were always considered in public charge evaluation. So here in California then, one of the factors immigration officers will try to predict in the public charge test they're administering is whether a person is likely to use cash assistance program, full scope Medi-Cal, CalFresh, and or a federal housing program in the future. But again, this prediction is based on all sorts of aspects of a person's present situation, like their age, their health, and their income not just on whether they've ever used one of these programs in the past. Also note that several kinds of Medi-Cal use specifically do not count under the new public charge policies. These include emergency Medi-Cal services, school-based services for children, Medi-Cal use by immigrant children under 26 years of age, and Medi-Cal use by pregnant women and up to 60 days after a pregnancy. While the new list of programs that count for public charge has grown, the reality is that most people who will face a public charge test aren't even eligible for the programs that the public charge test considers. Or if a person is participating in one of these programs, it's likely that the person won't have a public charge test in their future. For example, if you are receiving CalFresh or Medi-Cal, it's probably because you have an immigration status like a U visa that is not subject to public charge. For reference, I talked about the groups of immigrants who aren't subject to public charge in module one. Also, the only public benefits that are considered in a public charge test are those listed on slide eight. That means that there are many public programs that aren't included in the public charge test whatsoever. All of the services listed here 
and many more not listed will not impact a person if they apply for an immigration benefit that includes a public charge test. Some important programs that do not count for public charge purposes are CHIP, WIC, Emergency and Disaster Relief, and Public Health Services. A question we hear a lot at the ILRC has to do with family members who use benefits and how that might impact an applicant's case, even if the applicant isn't using benefits. It's important to know that benefits received by your family members are not part of your public charge analysis and will not directly harm your case. However, if the family member who is using benefits is also the family member who is petitioning for you to get a green card, immigration officers can consider that family member's use of benefits in their assessment of the family member's ability to support you financially. This is an application requirement. Also, if someone in your family is eligible for a benefit that counts for public charge purposes, but you receive the benefit on behalf of that family member, that will not affect you if you apply for an immigration benefit that includes a public charge test. For example, if your US citizen child is eligible for CalFresh, but you physically receive the benefit for your child because you are her parent, that won't be considered in your public charge test. A key date to know regarding the new public charge policies is February 24th, 2020. That's the date the Trump administration's changes to public charge took effect. However, there are some important nuances to the February 24th date. First, use of any of the newly added benefits, those ones noted in red on slide eight, Use of any of those benefits before February 24th does not count in public charge assessments under the new policies. Also, there is an implementation distinction to keep in mind if your case will be decided by USCIS here in the United States versus at a consular office or embassy abroad. If your case was pending with USCIS before February 24th, USCIS will decide it under the old public charge policies, which were much more forgiving. However, if your case will be decided at a US consulate or embassy, your case will be evaluated under the new public charge policies if you have an interview on or after February 24th, even if your case was pending at the office before that date. Here are some takeaway points on public charge. I covered some of these points in more detail in module one, so please watch that for more information if you haven't already. First, public charge does not apply to everyone. Many people, such as US citizens, permanent residents applying to naturalize, asylees and refugees, and U visa holders, for example, don't have a public charge test. Second, public charge only applies to two types of immigration applications. Applications for permanent residence through a family member and applications for a visa to enter the United States. Third, public charge does not affect your eligibility for public benefits programs. You can continue to apply for available services for which you are eligible. Fourth, the services that your family members receive will not harm your application if you have a public charge test. Lastly, it's important to consult an immigration expert if you have questions about your personal situation, especially before you cancel any public benefits. We want to emphasize that if public charge is confusing to you, you are not alone. The new public charge policies are meant to be confusing and to intimidate immigrants from accessing public programs they are eligible for and that they need to care for themselves and their families. 
We hope that this presentation made things a little bit clearer, and we encourage you to continue learning about public charge and to seek out immigration lawyers and accredited representatives to answer your questions. At the ILRC, we have created some resources on public charge that you might like to review to increase your knowledge of public charge. Links to those are on the slide. If you'd like to talk with a legal services provider in California who understands public charge, take a look at the list of public charge providers on the California Department of Social Services website. You can search for providers nationwide by zip code on the Immigration Advocates website. 